Welcome to Digital Church from the East Solent and Downs Methodist Circuit in Southern England. I'm David Musket, I'm the Superintendent Minister. It's good that you've joined us for this service for Advent Sunday. As we begin in worship, we begin in prayer, we'll be thinking about waiting, watching, preparing in this service. And so our prayer calls us to worship faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In this Advent season, as we prepare, as we watch, as we wait, we look for Christ to come in righteousness and love, bringing salvation from above. We begin in worship singing, Hills of the North Rejoice.
continue in worship in prayers of praise and of confession. Advent God, we worship you, the God who comes. Advent God, we worship you, the God who comes. You are not remote from the world you have made, but each day you come to us, blessing us with your presence. You came in creation itself as your spirit moved over the waters of chaos. You came in Jesus Christ, made flesh in our world of weakness and need. You came in power to raise him from death, a mighty promise for all creation. Advent God, we worship you, the God who comes. Each day you come by your spirit, gently and powerfully working in the lives of men and women. Advent God, we worship you, the God who comes. At the end of time, you will come in power and righteousness, in mercy and redeeming love. Advent God, we worship you, the God who comes. Grant us the grace to welcome your coming. Inflame our love to yearn for your presence. Enlarge our vision to recognise your coming day by day. Advent God, we worship you, the God who comes. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. You are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He teaches the humble his ways. The almighty and merciful Lord, grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the Lord we put our trust, the Lord who saves and heals. As the psalmist wrote, be still and know that I am God. adore you. Lord God, we adore you. Because you have come to us in the past, 
You have spoken to us in the law of Israel. You have challenged us in the words of the prophets. You have shown us in Jesus what you are really like. Lord God, we adore you. Because you still come to us now, you come to us through other people in their love and concern for us. You come to us through those who need our help. You come to us now, even as we worship you. Lord God, we adore you because you will come to us at the end. You will be with us at the hour of death. You will reign supreme when all institutions fail. You will still be our God when our history has run its course. Lord God, we adore you. We welcome you, the God who comes. Come to us now in the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is none like you. We want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. We sing, my Jesus, my Saviour. Our reading comes from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 36. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. 
Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard, so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. the last time you had to wait. Waiting is often a very passive experience. For instance, you may have had to wait for a bus or a train. Once you're at the stop or the station, there's nothing much you can do except wait. You may have had the experience of waking up earlier than you had wanted to or intended and couldn't get back to sleep. There's not much you can do except wait for morning. That's what we might call passive waiting. Just waiting. I'm sure you can think of other examples. But there's another kind of waiting. Waiting for the birth of a baby. Something that parents are fully involved in. They're active in their waiting. At the moment I'm sure we're all waiting for Christmas. Many of you will be very involved in that waiting as well with lists of things to do, things to buy, things to plan. That's active waiting. Advent, beginning today, is a time for waiting. And it's active waiting. It's a time of preparation. It's not simply a time to prepare for a celebration, the biggest birthday party that anybody ever gets. It is that, but it's not just that. Advent is a time of active waiting and preparation to celebrate Jesus' birth, the coming of God among his people and his presence among us now. But it's also the time when we recall that we are always waiting for his return, preparing, being ready. That waiting for his return is also active waiting. It's not waiting like waiting for a bus that may be timetabled, even if it may not come on time. It's not waiting like waiting for Christmas, which is always the 25th of December. It's a little like waiting for the birth of a baby. You have to be ready, but you don't know exactly when it will be. Though even then you have a due date, but as the time approaches, you begin to know the signs. Jesus described it a little like that. He talked about recognising the signs. Just as you recognise the signs of the approach of summer by the fig trees, and other trees coming into leaf, so there are signs of his coming. But the key part of Jesus' advice about how we engage in this waiting is to be alert. Be alert. I always think of the bumper sticker that I have on my trombone case. Be alert. Your country needs alerts. Be alert. We've reached the yes but how moment, haven't we? 
you're screaming at the screen, yes, I know I have to watch, yes, I know I have to be alert, yes, I know I have to be ready, but how? What is it I'm looking for? Even when it gets really practical, I think metaphor can help us. You're watching for light amid the darkness. It can be a dark time of year, so a good time to think in these terms. We live in dark times. Conflict between nations and within nations, conflict between communities and neighbours and families and within communities and within families, breakdown in relationships at all levels, famine and deprivation, poverty and oppression, hunger and disease, interest only in personal advantage, the evaporation of concern for others, an obsession only with emptiness or vacuous trivia, sometimes giving a quick fix but no long-term satisfaction. People held in slavery and forced labour, exploited for their desperation for work, for money, for their family, for their bodies. People living in hopeless despair amid death and destruction. Some darkness caused by natural events and disasters, which may or may not be increasing because of human action over many years. Some darkness caused directly by human action, what we could call human inhumanity. As the Bible says, as the watchman looks for the morning, so longs my soul for you, O God. We watch for the coming of Jesus as a watchman looks for the morning. A watchman looks for the morning in the right direction, east, and keeps looking, straining for the first signs of light from below the horizon. Or back with Jesus' metaphor, you look at the barren twigs of the fig tree, watching for the first signs of the buds that will form leaves. That helps us. Back with the light in the darkness metaphor. What are we alert for the first signs of? We look for the first signs of dawn. We look for the first glimmers of light above the horizon. We look for light breaking into the darkness. People recovering from illness. People rebuilding their lives. The healing of relationships, reconciliation between people and families and communities and nations, peace talks and peace treaties, people treated with dignity and compassion, relief arriving in disaster zones, people being fed and clothed and sheltered, swords being turned into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, weapons being dismantled and human energy and economic activity going into relief and measures that lead to life and health and peace. Glimpses of joy on the faces of children receiving gifts and love when they've been used only to abuse and being taken advantage of. Forgiveness and rehabilitation instead of revenge. Grace and mercy rather than vindictive hatred. Look for light, long for the coming of morning, keep watching because the light is coming, but don't wait passively as if asleep, be alert. The next step is to celebrate the light when you see it and be part of the spread of the light and of the good news of the light. When you see that light, you know that the day is near. You see the Son of Man coming in glory. As people of light, you stand before him as he comes in the cloud. The kingdom of God is near. Walk as people of light. Support and be involved in the activities of light. Watch as the watchman for the morning, 
and be determined to walk in light, demonstrating light, bringing light in the dark places. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. Christ, be our light, shine in and through us. We come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Lord, may we be watchful, ready and alert for your coming. We come to you in prayer, knowing that you come to meet us. Lord, prepare us for your coming in the church. Clean out the unnecessary clutter of our church life, the piles of dead habits, the cupboards full of prejudice, 
the cobwebs of compromise and the sad rotors of forgotten dreams. Open our church to the free flow of your refreshing spirit. Give us a new vision and hope. We want to belong to you, to know your presence. Lord, prepare us for your coming in the world. Come, drive away despair and cynicism from our public life. Revive our dreams of justice. Restore our passion for what is good and right and true. Establish your just and gentle rule, where peace has been powerless and violent people have had their day. Set a flame to the fuse of justice, where arrogant people have defied the moral order year after year. Guard well the new springtime of hope, where peace has come like a gift, wrapped in reconciliation and gladness. Lord, prepare us for your coming in our communities. In the problems of our localities, help us never to forget the supremacy of love. May love motivate our care for our neighbourhoods. May love heal the social ills which drag us into despair. May love inspire our citizenship to rise beyond mediocrity. We name in our minds any problems in our own localities of which we are aware. We pray that love, gracious and practical, will find a way. Lord, prepare us for your coming in those in need. Give us eyes to search the face of the stranger and there to see the face of the Saviour. Give us sensitivity to hear the doubt and hesitation and there with that person to share the confusion and futility. There are those we know who are ill now, struggling today to handle the pain. We keep a moment's silence as we pray for them, any who are on our hearts and minds at the moment. We pray for them. We pray that you will come to us in them. We pray that you will come to them in us. We draw our prayers together in the prayer for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn is that Advent hymn, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending.
Finally, we ask God's blessing on us. O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God the Father, judge all merciful, make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. May God the Son, coming among us in power, reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. May God the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and those we love and all for whom we pray, today and always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen. We do thank you for being with us, for joining in worship for Advent Sunday. We do like it if you contact us and details of how to do that will be on the screen in just a moment. 